Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric Black and today I am doing a full review and comparison of the Silverstein Ambipoly Reed lineup. Now it's fall of 2020 as I create this video, but I think Silverstein's trying to get into the car industry because I'm sitting here with the 2021 versions of these reeds. Currently in their French Cup lineup we have the Prima, the Vivace, and the blue cut. They also make a German cut for what I presume to be German style mouthpieces, but I don't think it works with French mouthpieces, so I haven't included it in this video. Now, I know what you're thinking. We've got the 2021 reeds, but do they come with leather seats? The answer is no, but anyone who has bought a Silverstein product before knows that they tend to do packaging right. So we've got a very nice Thick cut paper, uh, it has an almost velvety texture to it, very kind of luxurious feeling. It's the same uh, paper they used for their original Alta cane reeds for anyone who purchased those. Inside the package we have a little um, card that shows you how to pair your reed with your mouthpiece. It's got a QR code on it as well. And then we have the package that the reed actually comes in, which is like a little luggage tag. Um, it says Alta on it, and then the reed goes in this standard kind of reed slot. Uh, it's important to note that the blue cut does not come with this luggage tag. I'm gonna quickly throw up the description Silverstein writes about each of these reeds. Feel free to pause the video if you wanna take a closer look. Otherwise, we're gonna keep moving. Because my videos tend to run a little long, we're going to jump pretty much straight away into the comparison. However, I do want to say that a lot of people compare the plastic reed that they're testing to their favorite cane reed. I think we've beaten this horse to death. So instead, I'm going to compare these reeds to the industry standard plastic reed, Legere. Uh, I will be putting these reeds up against the European Signature Clarinet Cut and the Soprano Saxophone Cut. Uh, in addition, I will be testing these reeds on the Nomos B2. This is the mouthpiece that Silverstein says works best with their reeds. It's made by Play Easy or um, maybe it's Plain Nick uh, in Austria. And I will be pairing it with a Silverstein Cryo Ligature. So we have a completely Silverstein based setup. Now, all of that being said, Silverstein has in no way sponsored this video. So without further ado, let's get on to the playing portion of the comparison.
Now, before I go any further, I want you to pause the video and tell me below in the comments which read you thought sounded the best. I don't want your opinion influenced by my experience or analysis in the following section. I'm going to be breaking down my review into three sections. Sound, articulation, and response slash playability. Here is the order in which I thought the reads personally sounded the best. I thought the Vivace had a beautiful, warm, round sound. I was playing on completely different equipment than I'm normally used to. However, the Vivace let me get a sound um, very close to what I am trying to achieve with my traditional setup. The Blue had a little more focus in it than the Vivace, which I definitely think could be useful depending on which acoustical environment you find yourself in. The Primo, um, I couldn't get quite as pure a sound as I would have liked. However, I still thought it produced um, a very nice sound and the extra fuzz or maybe air that might be present in the sound probably wouldn't be audible in most performing situations. Compared to the silver scenes, if I'm being honest, the Legere take a dramatic dip in sound quality. At times they sounded fuzzy, unfocused, perhaps a little dull. In certain registers, the sound changes uh, considerably, uh, either getting super bright and kind of edgy or kind of a plasticky sound to it, sound quality. For what it's worth, I think the soprano saxophone reed sounded a little better than the European signature, but it wasn't by a large margin. Now, being fair to Legere, um, it's possible that the European signature read I got was a dud. Um, I did spend a significant amount of time playing Legere reads in the past. Um, before the European signature clarinet read came out, I played on their standard signature reads with a Hawkins Zener blank mouthpiece. And I used this setup for, for quite a while and it worked pretty well for me. However, during that time, I kind of discovered that about two out of every 10 reads for that particular cut were either the completely wrong strength or were just not good reads. So it's possible that I just was unlucky enough to get a um, kind of a poor example of a European signature read. That being said, the silver scenes didn't seem to have any quality control issues like that. The other alternative is that um, perhaps I got the wrong strength of Legere reads. Now, looking at the read charts, which I'll put on the screen now, uh, the 3.25 pretty much lines up with the Silver Scene 3 Plus, which I got and was recommended to me for this particular mouthpiece. They said anything from 3 Plus to 3.5 Plus. Uh, depending on how much resistance uh, you like in your setup. I tend to not like um, a super resistant setup, so I went on the softer end of that. I will say that the 3 Plus was probably ever so slightly too soft for me, um, but it was still workable. I would say a 3 Plus is like equivalent to like a soft Rulipede 56 3.5. However, Legere also says that a 3.25 is just slightly softer than um, a Van Doren V12 3.5. This does not seem to be accurate at all. I've seen plenty of internet discussions talking about Legere's rechart and how wrong it is. I mean, you can find it all over the web that in some cases the Legere read strength is almost a half step softer than what it should be. Um, for instance, if you play a 3.5 V12, which I generally do, Legere recommends buying either a 3.25, maybe um, 3.5 if you like harder 3.5 V12s to match to that read. However, the internet typically recommends a 3.75 if you play a 3.5 V12. It's pretty crazy to me that this read has been on the market since I think 2016 
and they still haven't updated their rechart or fixed their rechart to accurately reflect what strength read you should be buying. If someone isn't a member of the clarinet community that really takes an interest in this stuff, how are they supposed to know that Legere's read chart is totally off? I'm glad that Legere offers um, a return policy or an exchange policy if you feel you've gotten the wrong read, but think about how many reads probably wouldn't need to be returned if they just got the read chart right in the first place. It, it kind of boggles my mind, but anyway, we're gonna keep moving on. That being said, if I did get the right strength and the read is just bad, um, I wanted this test to be as fair as possible, so I only ordered one of each read. Alright, so that brings us to articulation. Now for me, articulation is where plastic reeds really tend to shine. I don't know what it is about them, but pretty much every plastic reed I put on this mouthpiece articulated better than if I were to put a cane reed of equivalent size on that, or strength on that mouthpiece. For the Mendelssohn Scherzo articulation test, I don't necessarily have an order of preference for the reeds. However, I did prefer Silverstein once again over Legere in general. Being fair though, um, the Legere did perform well in this test as well. Um, so, to begin with, we have Silverstein Blue. I really liked the focus in this reed. I thought it had a lot of ping and resonance and a very nice crisp articulation. Um, Feel-wise, it felt really good to articulate on a perfect amount of resistance. Uh, if I'm being honest, it was just a little bit too loud, I think, in most of uh, the recordings I did. With the Silver Seam Vivace, I once again really liked the sound here. Um, I thought it was very warm and round. Um, I'm not exactly sure it's the exact sound I want for this excerpt, but it was still quite nice. For the Silverstein Primo, the standout here was how easily I could diminuendo on this read. Uh, I think you could hear it in the scale, um, the ascending scale in the Mendelssohn Scherzo, but I could get that topsy very, very quiet, um, noticeably more quiet than any other read, and I really like that about this read. Um, with both Legere's, I found the focus to be a little more lacking than any of the Silverstein's. Um, Feel-wise, they also felt pretty mushy. Um, not even barring the potential strength issues I might have had with the Legere, uh, something about the facing or the cut of the reed makes it feel a little mushy no matter what strength I'm playing on, at least in my experience with these reeds. Um, however, the silver scenes feel a lot more like playing a traditional cane reed, uh, though not exactly the same either. It's just closer to um, that kind of feeling. Okay, so this is the section where I feel like most reeds, uh, plastic or otherwise, let me down the hardest. None of these reeds responded as well as a good cane read for me. I spent about a week playing exclusively with the Nomos B2 preparing to record this video so that I could get give everything a fair chance here. It wasn't quite as comfortable as my standard mouthpiece but by the end of the week I felt like I could pretty much get it to play and respond the way I wanted it to. The last few years uh, as Legere has really climbed in popularity you have started to hear people say something to the effect of a good Legere read is like 90 to 95 percent as good as your best cane read. In general I agree with that sentiment. I think Legere has made a great product and if this video seems to be a little hard on Legere it's only because they put themselves in a position to be the main competition for anyone uh, making a new plastic reed and trying to get into this market. Now, going back to the 90 to 95 percent thing, um, while I agree with that sentiment, that last 5 to 10 percent really matters to me as a musician. If I feel like I'm being limited by my equipment in any way, why would I play that equipment? I'm just not happy when I feel like a performance could have been better if my equipment hadn't let me down in some way. Whether that be, um, you know, a note doesn't respond exactly 
the moment I want it to, or it doesn't respond at exactly the right dynamic, whether, you know, super pianissimo or a very loud fortissimo. Um, I really want my equipment to produce the sound that I'm hearing and imagining in my head. And if I don't feel the equipment allows me to do that, well then, you know, I just don't want to use that equipment. So talking about these specific reads for a moment, I felt the Legeres had problems starting in some cases. They were a little unpredictable as to when exactly they would start. Sometimes they would start right when I wanted them to, but the sound was a little unfocused, maybe a tad airy. And sometimes they responded immediately, but they were too loud. You know, the sound kind of jumped out at you. In general though, they always felt mushy to me, going back to that word I used to describe their articulation as well. And that feeling just doesn't make for a great playing experience. Um, you can get used to it, but uh, it's not super comfortable, at least for me personally. All of that being said, I'm sure I could get used to the Legeres if I use them exclusively for a while. I'm sure um, their idiosyncrasies would become more predictable to me. And I'm also sure there's probably a mouthpiece out there that works better for them than this. Uh, in fact, I had the opportunity to test them on the um, Pomerico Bakun mouthpieces that were all the rage a few years ago. And I thought they sounded and responded very well on that particular line of mouthpieces. The Silverstein reeds in general responded better than the Legere's. That being said, I thought the Vivace and Blue responded better in turn than the Primo. The Primo for me was just a little bit more resistant, a little more hesitant to speak than the other two. I always felt like I was having to slightly muscle the Primo to really get it to respond the way I wanted and, it, and expected it to. This, however, might be a plus for certain people who want to use a little more force or need a little more resistance in their setup to really get it to respond the way they're comfortable with. The blue and Vivace were the most natural feeling to me. They felt definitely more in the realm of your typical cane reed feeling setup. While the response wasn't quite as good as um, a typical cane setup with the blue and Vivace cut, I felt that it was more manageable and I would probably adjust pretty quickly to their idiosyncrasies if I were to switch to a fully synthetic setup using these two reeds. Now to wrap this up, there were a couple of cons in general that I found with these reeds and with the Legeres. Now I'm thinking it might be a mouthpiece issue, but I'm not entirely sure. Pretty much the moment the baffle of this mouthpiece got too wet, the reeds started to sound very buzzy or kind of plasticky. It pretty much didn't matter if I was playing on the silver scene or the Gere. In any case, in either case, the sound took a negative turn the second too much moisture had condensed on the baffle. Also, I'm thinking it's more of a strength issue than a reed issue, but I did find it a little difficult to reach the extremes of the altissimo with the silver scene reeds. In general, I could eke out a super C, what is that, like a C6, but it wasn't comfortable and it certainly wasn't as easy as like my standard setup. However, I think if I went up to a 3.5 on each of these reeds instead of a three plus, that wouldn't be an issue. All in all, I thought this was a pretty interesting and eye-opening play test. I don't think Silverstein has gotten kind of the intention that they deserve with these reads, and I hope this video kind of changes that. Am I going to be switching exclusively to them? I don't think so. Again, I still really like the way my setup plays and responds with cane reads. However, if you're already playing a synthetic setup, you know, you're heavy into the Legere camp, I think these are worth checking out. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. For those of you who have already tried them, let me know what you thought of these reads down in the comments below. If you have any further questions, uh, maybe some concerns about my experience with this, you know, with this set of reads, feel free to reach out in the comments too. I'm happy to answer any additional questions you might have. As always, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I have a lot more ideas for the future and I hope you'll join me in exploring them. Until next time, Happy practicing.